put the world in order, you must first put the nation in order. And to put the nation in order, you must first put the family in order. And to put the family in order, you must first cultivate your personal life. And to cultivate your personal life, you must first set your heart straight. government that they've got to save our remaining old growth forests on the south coast, ensure sustainable second growth logging, and ban wall log exports. <laughs> Look at what the BC Liberal government's forest policies are, they're basically liquidate the old growth, shut down the old growth dependent mills as the old growth runs out, uh, liquidate the second growth, export the raw logs because they haven't retooled mills to handle second growth logs, and then uh, deregulate the TFLs on private lands so they can convert those lands into suburbs. You could not get a more backward set of forest policies on this coast. Uh, we can turn Vancouver Island into a place of tree plantations, of clear cuts, of uh, all the jurisdictions of the planet that lack the spectacular uh, 10 foot wide, 300 feet tall trees that we have here in British Columbia. That's the road we're going down unless the BC government smartens up. There are consequences for the thousands of mill workers who lost their, lost their forestry jobs because the BC government has deregulated the industry, allowed the mills to close, while record raw log exports leave this province. 75% of the productive old growth forests have been logged on Vancouver Island. 90% of the valley bottoms have been decimated. Are we going to allow the government to take the last 10% where the giants grow? No! Some of these trees have been around for 1,000 years. How many of you would like to know they'll be here for another 1,000? government to end old growth logging on BC South Coast, log second growth sustainably, and ban raw log exports. Preserving our old growth forests is not a partisan issue. This is an issue of human rights. It's an issue of our future for our children and our grandchildren and many generations to come. We have a saying in our language, Hishuk Ish Tsawa, everything is one, everything is connected. And to protect our world, we need to change our culture today because we live in a global world and we need to bring back the respect, the teachings of many ancient cultures, respect for our land. And I work with tribal parks in Clockwatt Sound and tribal parks are not conventional protected areas that we've seen in Canada and the United States in recent years. The main difference between tribal parks and national parks is that we do account for sustainable livelihoods. And that's the reason why I like the 
values that are being expressed here today is that you're talking about protecting ancient forests, but you're also talking about protecting jobs. But this is really about this government looking and not giving a damn about what's going to happen on this island. I happen to represent a bunch of people that work in the forest industry, but it's a union that understands that we don't work with environmental groups, we don't work with the communities, and we don't work to help make sure that we have a climate that we can live in over the next 10 to 20 years. We're all not going to be here. So this is about you. It's about all you young people saying to this Liberal government, do you want a forest policy that takes everything into account? That's the most important thing, that we take care of our natural resources, take care of our forests, and God bless all of you people for coming out here, because this is fabulous. Thanks a lot. Yes, God bless all of you, because there's 500 of you. Thank you for the 500 of you who showed up today. We just did a count. Thank goodness there's some people out here who get it, that we're not apart from the forest. We're not apart from the ecosystems. They're our home. They are us. We're part of it. We're part of this human ecosystem. We're part of the natural ecosystem. And they form part of the beauty of life, of living, of being. That it's not just extending rights to human beings that makes us civilized, that we continue to be brutes if we don't extend those rights to the environment, to the ancient forest, to the bugs, the birds. <laughs> secure the foundations of this home, which is our ecosystem. If we don't actually make sure the cladding, which keeps the wind out, you know, make, controls the temperature. If we don't make sure that the artistry and the architecture that has taken millions of years to bring us the beauty of ancient forests and their complexity, if we don't make sure that that is all solid, we will find ourselves standing out in the cold amidst the ruins of our home. And that is not an option. Every government since 1956, since the Sloan Report, has honored and respected that premise, that basic premise of protecting the public good through tree farm control. Until the BC Liberals got into office. As far as I can tell, this is their policy. A CEO, a forest giant, gives the BC Liberals a bunch of money and they gave the industry everything they wanted. Warden Campbell is going to go to Copenhagen in a couple of months and explain to the world, because atmospheres don't know borders, explain to the world that he has no strategy to protect the most efficient carbon capture vehicle and instrument that we have in British Columbia, that that's not protected. I think that's unthinkable. It's true, they set a target to reduce emissions by 33% by 2020, but then they forgot to cut the subsidies for the oil and gas industry. And there's something else they forgot. They don't have a plan and no target to address CO2 emissions from our forests. If the CO2 emissions from our logging in BC would be included in the official account, BC's emissions would be almost 80% higher than the official number. This is a big, big problem. We can protect our forests, log forests in a way that protects the climate and maintains jobs. We can do it. Let's do it! Yeah. Yeah.